guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this pretty simple little painting. I am painting a magnolia flower and I actually surprised myself with how much I enjoyed painting something so simple because usually I paint characters and I focus on people but I actually did just an object. I did this flower and I thought that it would be boring that I wouldn't really be as interested in it but I think that this is something that I want to do more of. I like thinking of symbols and objects that can mean something. So even just working on this one and seeing how much I did like it is getting my mind working on new ways that I can arrange objects or different things that can mean other things, especially in combination or like painting poison bottles or things like that. I just, uh, I think that it's something that I've never really given a chance to think about because I never thought I really would be interested in it, but this piece showed me that I could be and I could really enjoy working on inanimate objects. It is definitely a nice change of pace from working at the same character and working on the same features and eyes and nose and just having to work through that. I think that this will really add a little bit more variety on the way that I think about my pieces and how I can incorporate objects into pieces that even have characters in them. And as always, I have a link down in the description to all of the tools that I'm using. So if you're curious on what I have for today, I've got that all listed and you'll start to see which ones are my favorite tools to use because I've got those down there. But uh, today I want to talk a little bit about overworking your paper and overworking it to the point of extreme buckling. And this is something that all watercolor paper has a limit of how much water it can take and how much layering it can take before it starts deteriorating. And you really just want to work with your paper to see where that is. It tends to be where the nicer the paper is or the thicker the paper is, the more water it can take and the more layers. And the cheaper it is, as a rule of thumb, it tends to be able to take less layers. So this is what you want to do. You really want to get used to your paper and you want to test its boundaries. And the reason why that's so important is because it can really limit how you finish your piece off. So if you know that your paper doesn't take a lot of layers, that it can't handle as many, it means that when you're starting off at the beginning, you can go in with a darker value. Whereas if you have paper that can take a lot of layering, you know that you can slowly build it up to that and be okay with the paper. And I mentioned this because I've actually, this is the second piece that I did today that's pretty similar to this. And the first one, I really overworked it. And it's been a little while since I've overworked this paper because I've, I actually have a lot of experience overworking it when I was starting off. I didn't really know at what point it was past that point. It was too deteriorated. But after a while, I got used to seeing what looks good and what point is too far. So I just recommend really playing with your paper and also testing it out on one of your sheets of papers. And I know that it feels really hard to use one of your pages, especially when it's something really nice like Arches for things like doing color swatches or testing out how much water it can take, but it really will improve your finished piece. There was a point at the beginning of when I was doing watercolor and I was working with this nice paper, I was very timid with using these papers for extra things like that. I only wanted to use it on finished pieces. But once I loosened that up and I allowed myself to play with it, use it, have these pieces sitting next to me when I'm working on finished stuff and do swatches, lots of them, that allowed me to get much better at it. And you want to use the paper that you're doing the final piece on. That way it matches, you get a feel of that. But, but anyways, you do want to make sure that you are testing it out and seeing how much water it can take. And there are points where sometimes I've gone in where I wanted to do say a wet on wet technique and I put way too much water in that first. And I knew that that was too much. So I was able to dab it up and save that paper. But if I had let it sit there and soak before I really realized it, or if I didn't even know that that was too much water, it could have ruined it. And if I had done line work on top of it, that would have been pretty frustrating. But it's just uh, the more you get used to using it and testing out its limits, the more you know what those limits are and where you can push it. But a little bit about this actual piece. I had a lot of fun with this background. I think that I, I might prefer it closer to the very beginning where it was kind of this hazy gray, a little bit stormy. So I do like that, but overall I, I'm okay with where it ended up. This is a good example of the layering. I used a lot of layers to get to the final result for the background. And it was good that I had just 
did a piece where I really overworked it that was similar. So I knew when I was doing this one, what point to stop. But I had fun with it because I uh, first did a layer where I was a lot more textured with it. And I've been enjoying doing backgrounds like this because it allows me to work slower. Whereas if I was doing one smooth wash, I would have to really make sure that I was spreading it out and keeping the water nice and wet on all the edges. That way it became a very smooth wash. And I love doing smooth washes, but sometimes it's nice when I'm doing a background like this where there's a really intricate outline and it's hard to keep track of all the edges of water to make sure that it's not drying out in some areas. And when I'm doing something textured like this, it allows me to spot from one to the next because if it dries out in a little bit in one area, it's okay because that patchiness is built into the design. It's already there. It's meant to be there. And it it's nice to take some of that pressure off and to just loosen up with the watercolor and play with that texture. And I really liked that. And lately I've been enjoying having more of a textury background and then layering a smooth flat wash on top of it just to knock that texture a little bit down so I can control it and keep it where I want it to be but it's still this subtle variation in value and color and I still get to be able to experiment with that and enjoy that process. And now for my favorite part, the gold embellishment. When I was starting this off, I wasn't sure exactly what icon I wanted it to be. I thought about doing like the silhouette of a bee, but ultimately I went with the crescent moon. And the way that I did this, since I didn't have it sketched out in the original design, I just cut out a crescent moon shape with my circle cutter tool. And I'll have a link down in the description, even though I don't show it. I used it at a different table with a cutting map, but I just cut that out and then I placed it on top of the final piece and positioned it where I wanted it to be. This was very helpful because I could really get it exactly where I wanted it and made sure that it worked with the composition. But I uh, placed it there and then I just traced around where the flower petals were going to be, where it was overlapping the moon. And then I cut that out of the crescent moon and then just uh, traced around it so that I could get a very nice clean crescent moon shape on the final piece. And then I'm using my Fine Tech Gold palette and I love this thing. It's uh, it's really one of my favorite tools, honestly. I have always loved the effect that it has and how opaque it is. It's really nice at covering things up. But I did incorporate a couple of the colors. I went in with a really rich gold one and then I went in with the pale one and the silver one so that I could have a little bit more variation within the moon. And that's a great thing to do with these. They're very mixable with each other and you can layer them on top of each other. So I did a really interesting blend. Well, I thought it was interesting blended look with several of the different golds. And then I just started putting in a little stars throughout this piece. I tried to put the darker one or not the darker, the larger ones in very specific places so that it has a little bit more weight so that the eye draws to that. Uh, I did feel like this could have been a little bit better balanced with something that had a little bit more visual weight on the lower left hand side of the piece to balance out that moon. But it's uh, something that, again, every time I do a piece like this, I learn something and I learn to remember to pay attention to that earlier in new pieces. But I ended up going in with my Micron pen and I just did a nice solid line around the petals of the leaf to clean up where there are little spots on the watercolor or places where the gold from the moon had overlapped the ink. And then I also took that and I just added little dots over pretty much the whole piece actually. I actually like doing that. It's a really small detail, but I feel like it just, it adds something to it and I like it. And as far as the tape, I am using drafters tape. So it's intended to be stuck to paper and it's a lot less tacky than a lot of other tapes. So I highly suggest just looking for artist tape or drafters tape, but I do usually end up sticking it down to my jeans just to get a little bit of that stick off. And if I'm still having it pull and tear a little bit at the paper, I will hit it with my heat gun or my embossing gun just to warm it a little bit up and then it peels right off. It's really actually pretty surprising how well it works. I saw another artist do that and now I do it too. And that is it for today. I did paint this to go in this frame. So if you buy the original, you'll get the frame and everything and it is just ready to go and hang up on your wall or sit on your desk. And 
yeah, I love painting this. I might have to do more flowers and stuff like that, but I am taking this to a convention that I'm going to this weekend, which is called FireCon, and it's in Layton, Utah. It's really tiny, but it's for artists and writers, so it's really cool if you're in the area. But it will be available for one day today, Wednesday, before I am there. So if you want to pick it up before anyone else gets a chance, get it today. And if I don't sell it during the convention, I'll put it right back up at my shop on Sunday morning. So yeah, keep an eye out for this one. And I do have a link in the description as well as in the end card that will take you to my art shop that has this as well as lots of other prints and buttons and all sorts of art goodies that really does help me and it really supports me here. But yeah, I too post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. So I'll see you guys in my next video.